Now that I understand the benefit of greenhouse gas reporting, such as identifying efficiency opportunities and demonstrating environmental leadership, can you tell me specifically which greenhouse gases are reported? I'm glad you're interested in participating in greenhouse gas reporting. Let me start here. There are seven major categories of greenhouse gases, which includes carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxides, perfluorinated compounds or PFCs, hydrofluorocarbons or HPs, and a new addition to the pool, nitrogen trifluoride. All of these gases contribute at different magnitudes to warming the globe. Carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas, contributing about 75% of the overall warming effect when measured on a 100-year time frame. Since carbon dioxide is the most prominent greenhouse gas, all other greenhouse gases are scaled to the impact of carbon dioxide. This is called carbon dioxide equivalency. The process facilitates reporting because it converts the impacts of all greenhouse gases into one metric, allowing for easy impact comparisons between companies and sectors. So if my company emits, say, carbon dioxide and methane, you would combine and report them as one metric, carbon dioxide equivalency? Is that correct? Yes. So different greenhouse gases have different capacities for absorbing heat in the atmosphere and therefore warming the globe. The ability for a greenhouse gas to absorb heat is called radiative forcing. Methane, for example, has a stronger warming impact, or radiative forcing, on the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. So if your business emits both methane and carbon dioxide, we'll use a factor called a global warming potential to scale methane to the impact of carbon dioxide. This allows us to report a single number to your greenhouse gas reporting outlet. Um, that is that carbon dioxide equivalency I mentioned earlier. I see, but I saw that many companies report their greenhouse gas emissions in GWP 100. What does it mean by 100? Okay, 100 means 100 years in this case. Global warming potential, or the warming impact of a greenhouse gas relative to that of carbon dioxide, depends not only the gas's ability to absorb heat, but also on how long the gas lives in the atmosphere. That's why the time frame also plays a role in global warming potential calculations. For example, carbon dioxide is one of the most stable gases that we know of, and it will live in the atmosphere for a very long time before it decays or is absorbed by the ocean or taken up by the forests. In contrast, methane decays relatively quickly. Therefore, for a longer time frame, methane's global warming impact relative to carbon dioxide is smaller even though methane does have a much stronger radiative forcing. Sounds like there are many complex processes involved in global warming potential calculations. Who produces these calculations? The Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, in short IPCC, produces and updates global warming potential values. IPCC is a congregation of climate scientists from all over the world. As the science evolves, global warming potentials are updated over time. The most recent calculations were made for the Assessment Report 5, or AR5, that was adopted in 2014.